In this video, I'm gonna use my microwave that's flipped on the side to melt some iron because I wanna cast an iron wrecking ball keychain. It was supposed to be a simple cast, but it took me three attempts to do it because of a few mistakes that I made. I say mistakes, but let's not put it all in the same bucket. Sometimes I just like to experiment and see how far I can push it before the project fails. So here I have a wrecking ball that I printed in translucent PLA. I'll use a 75 millimeter mold to make a sand mold. I mix some fine sand with sodium silicate, also known as water glass. I used a little bit of cheese wax to stick the print to the table so it wouldn't move around too much while we make the mold. Then I froze the mold. First I cured the sodium silicate by microwaving the mold on a defrost setting using a cycle timer. Then I transferred it to my microwave kiln and I burned it out. The mold has been burned out, now let's melt some cast iron. I'm gonna melt 435 grams. The mold cracked, which was not a surprise, but it cracked after the iron solidified. In other words, it didn't leak through the mold. I recorded it a while ago, and now when I edit the video, I can't recall what was the exact reason why it failed. I mean, I could use it, but nah. I also wanted to make it bigger. So I cut some more iron from an iron break disc and I was ready to give it another shot. Preheating the iron with a blowtorch makes the microwave metal melting process much quicker. One of the mistakes I made was not remove the slag. Usually I don't have to when I cast iron, it just kind of sticks all together. But this time it was an issue and I wasn't prepared, I didn't have my spatulas lying around so I just took a chance and pour the metal. Unfortunately, it was an issue. But there's one more thing that happened that's probably even more interesting as it comes to watching failed casts. Wait for it. Wait for it. This was like the second time I used this microwave to melt iron, so I'm still not used to it because it melts metal faster, so this time iron was very very hot and the mold just couldn't take it, I had to make it thicker or stronger. Instead of a wrecking ball, I made an iron pokey ball. I made another mold and this time a little bit thicker. This is a 80 millimeter mold instead of 75. And I will also wrap it with aluminum tape. It can help to hold the mold together if it cracks. Aluminum obviously can withstand high temperatures, but the adhesive, it can catch fire. Just so you know, it will burn.
Let's see if the third time was lucky. The foil has been smoking for a while. I think it's still smoking. Yep, Whew. still smoking. I should wear a respirator. Ah, big. Nice one. This brings back memories. I remember that time when I was messing with the microwave and I accidentally opened a portal to, a, to another dimension and I saw myself as, a, as this famous celebrity singing about wrecking balls. This came out awesome. I attached the key, or you could attach it here, but then it wouldn't be as fun, I think, because the fun is in swinging it. I would not attach it to my car keys because if there would be an accident, this could wreck you. This is awesome for keys that you need to give out to people, you know, at work. Can I have a key to a storage room? Yep, here you go, and make sure you don't lose it. Of course, I wouldn't call it a wrecking ball if it couldn't wreck miniature houses. I wanted to make my own miniature brick house, but since I didn't have any bricks, I had to make them. So I did it by printing a mold, filling it with silicone and then, well, making the bricks from plaster. I decided to paint them, not because I wanted to, but because I thought if I leave them white, they will be overexposed on the camera, so that's why I did it. If you want to watch more videos about microwave metal melting, there's a playlist in comments that will get you started.